tray. If the pins hit the tray, it is possible that an inaccurate distorted impression will result. Place two or three thicknesses of asbestos over the teeth on the cast. Three or four extra thicknesses of asbestos are placed over the area of the abutment preparations from which the impression pins extrude. If the pins hit the tray, it is possible that the pins will be bent or the teeth will be fractured around the pinholes due to the force placed upon them by the tray hitting the pins. You note the extra thicknesses of asbestos in the anterior portion of the tray. Uh, the tray has been properly e extended for by asbestos. The centric stop areas on buckle non-supporting cusps. The acrylic is mixed and the tray is constructed. You know the notice the centric stop areas in pencil on the buckle non-supporting cusps. Also notice the relief area in the anterior portion of the tray for the pins. On the external surface of the tray, it, again, it is easy to see the relief area for the pins. The tray has been supplied with a handle to allow easy removal. The base is mixed and is injected around the pins very carefully, being careful not to include air bubbles in this impression. Very carefully injecting around the pins down the, along the cervical, along the slice, making sure there's sufficient light-bodied rubber. And then on the cuspid, we will start injecting at the bottom of the groove. And this is done in order not to, again, entrap air in the groove. Down along the cervical, around the pin, and then the mesial groove starting at the cervical, injecting upward, and covering the entire preparation with the light-bodied rubber base material. When there is ample light-bodied material, then the pins are tapped to make sure they are seated all the way in the preparations. And then a tray with the heavy-bodied rubber is placed over this, carefully seated until it is seated on the stops. And this is allowed to set up. When the rubber has set up, the tray must be very carefully removed in the long axis of the pins. If they are bent or if they're, they are torqued, they can fracture the very fragile uh, preparation. The pins will usually come out, in the, out of the impression and will remain in the prepared tooth. This is no problem because the pins are perfect cylinders and they are grasped with a hollow beak pliers and placed back in the little orifice in the rubber base impression. It is important that these pins are seated all the way because should they be sticking out a little bit farther, then the hole in the die will be longer than the natural tooth and the resultant bridge will have pins that are too long and it will not seat. So it's important to make sure these pins are in the proper hole and they are seated all the way. The cuspid is also checked, and if all the pins are in the proper place, and we've recorded all the details along the cervical and the impression, then we will silver plate the impression. Full amount of silver powder, we burnish the silver powder into the die, making sure that we cover all of the areas that we desire to be plated. After we have thoroughly covered those areas we wish to be plated by burnishing it in, we blow off the excess material. To eliminate having more plating than is carefully apply the wax around the periphery of the teeth and over the edentulous area. If the margins were extremely thin, it might be desirable to stay away from them until after the second step of plating is completed. This would eliminate any deformity of the margin due to the wax cooling and warping them out of shape. We've completed blocking out the areas 
that we don't desire to be plated, and we've left several tails up here that will engage the rubber, I mean the wire uh, connectors. We'll now apply our wire connectors. If the wires are bent in opposite directions, they'll retain the rubber impression better when it's immersed in the solution. One wire goes in one direction, and the other wire is applied in the opposite direction. And this will lock them in place so that we can pick carefully immerse the impression into the solution and a minimal amount of bubbles will be trapped in the dyes. After it's immersed, take an eyedropper, fill it full of the solution, and carefully remove any bubbles which may have been trapped in the impressions. After this is done, turn on the plater and with three dies, we'll set the milliamperage at 30 milliamperes. For each die or edentulous space that's to be plated, use 10 milliamperes. On our initial plate, the impression is removed from the tank, thoroughly washed and dried. At this time, we can inspect it to make sure that all of the areas are plating properly. The plate should be a milky white, as you see in the film. If there are any areas that are not plating properly, at this time, we can go back and reapply some silver powder to these areas. We would also block out these leads to the wires at this time so that we don't get any excessive amount of plating. A little additional wax will insulate this area and permit us to be frugal with the amount of silver that we use. After this is done, we'll again return the impression to the tank and plate for an additional eight hours or until we've built up a thickness of approximately one half to three quarters of a millimeter of plate. It's necessary to have this thickness, otherwise the silver plate has a tendency to fracture away from